We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young on location at MJ BizCon here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And kicking off this whole event, this single biggest week in the cannabis convention world, was a gentleman by the name of Chris Walsh. So not only did he kick off this conference, but he'll be sitting down with me next on In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. Don't look now, but it's a whole new world of weed out there. Pot is flower, it's Bruce Banner and Blue Dream. You've got bongs and dabs, resin and shatter, vaping and edibles, new terms, new strains, and new ways to use cannabis sativa, the plant. Some just made with CBD and hemp has minimal THC. There's sativa and indica strains and 100 chemicals all legal in 10 states for adult use. There's a lot to get to know. Get used to it, folks, because it's legal in the Bay State and it's not going away. Neither is In the Weeds with Jimmy Young next. Revolutionary Clinics is just one of 49 medical cannabis dispensaries in Massachusetts, but there's a reason why it's one of the most popular. It's their patient-first philosophy. All day long, they teach, they educate, they communicate about this complicated plant called cannabis sativa. That's true. Whether you visit their Cambridge location in Fresh Pond at 110 Fawcett Street or at 67 Broadway in Somerville. Revolutionary Clinics, where the patient comes first. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young and two very special guests. We are on location at MJ BizCon here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the, one of the founding editors of MJ BizCon is Chris Walsh. Thank you so much, Chris, for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Excited to talk. And, of course, I saw you for 30 seconds at CanX in Jamaica, and I'm glad to finally hang out with you and say hello. You know this guy, Kurt Dalton from Cannabis.net as well. So what are you, what's your reaction? Are you pleased with the turnout so far? I mean, first days behind you, you probably had no sleep up until this point anyway. Yeah, yeah that's, that's absolutely true. I think at these events, I sleep two to three hours a night. And when I get home on the weekend, I'll, I'll have an 18 hour period, literally 18 hours straight when I get home usually, um, because these are long days to put on an event this size. We're extremely happy with the turnout. I think, you know, a, a lot of, segments of the industry are really worried right now because there's some pain going on in different areas. Um, but if you look around as a whole, the industry is very healthy. There's still a lot of buzz around it. And our, our event has grown, which is really a reflection of where the industry's at. Uh, obviously, one of the uh, parts of the industry is the vaping industry that's yep. taken the most hit. I've walked by a few of these booths and there's like no one there. Um, but you know what happens with Ingenuity? Other products are coming out that have uh, a vaping-like experience without vape. Right, and you even saw after uh, vaping became an issue that the uh, some other products gained steam. Yep. You know, so then there was a spike in in edibles and infused products in markets that saw vape bans or or other pullbacks. So, you know. People are going to consume in some fashion, and if one of them goes away or is limited, they will likely migrate to another one. You have, we thought when we talked to you about a month ago, 30 to 35,000. Yeah. Where's that at as of today, or what do you think? We actually won't know until till the end of the week. We still get a lot of people who register throughout the week, but yeah, we'll probably be close to 35,000. Still in between that range. Last year we were at uh, 27. Uh, but again, when you're looking at the industry, there's been layoffs, there's been uh, you know, contractions in Canada and uh, other problems, but overall looks pretty good. Uh, Mark Raymond's keynote address today, the CEO of Netflix, uh, tremendously inspiring for the entrepreneur in the audience and in me too, I might add. I was so impressed. You had to love that as well. He, he, I told him this on stage after when I interviewed him. Um, I think he was the best keynote we've had. He was fantastic. and. Whenever we get keynotes from outside the industry, I get a little worried because I'm like, are they going to relate this to the to the industry? They usually don't know about it, and sometimes they just try want to share personal stories. It's like, no, people in this industry, you know, you, they need to learn from you. And so I, I had this conversation. I said, make sure that these are business principles that they can take away if you don't know the industry. And he hit it out of the park. I think there were three or four lessons that me and MJ Biz Daily are going to take to heart and try to implement. 
Absolutely. Looking for a clever idea? I've got one. I'll be sharing it soon as we launch our crowdfunding initiative in the next month. That's what I was going to ask you. You see the checks come in. You see the exhibitors for the year in advance. What are your three trends you could give people that this year's show is different or emerging that you're seeing from the other? It's the attendance, the booth, the products. What's kind of what are you seeing at the very front line of what's coming in for people are paying for? Yeah, we see um, at least at this show, uh, companies are investing more in their booths and the size of them. If you look around from up here where we're at, there are giant signs everywhere. There are spinning signs. There are double-decker exhibits, there's ones with viewing platforms. Um, and this is, again, a reflection of the industry, is that you have to find new ways to compete and market and brand yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they are getting very sophisticated, like any other industry, with their exhibits. And this, this has only been a trend in the last couple of years. A couple of years ago, um, you know, everyone had the same kind of standard booth, and they didn't understand the value of investing more in it. Um, and now you have massive investments just in a booth that's up for three days. Uh, so that's a, that's a big trend we're seeing. And I think that, you know, you are seeing some of the vape, uh, so fewer of the vape companies uh, that are out there and you're seeing a lot more, in general, the cultivation is always a big part of our show and that's, uh, that's big again. But um, in terms of other trends, um, you know, I guess it's, again, it's just growth. We grew our show, our, our show footprint here dramatically we have uh, you know a couple hundred more exhibitors and uh, these companies are are coming from all over the country it's not you know as California has scaled back a little other countries have uh, uh, states, states have risen to uh, take on a bigger presence that's right and uh, it's funny I would actually interview Joshua Berman from ICANN from Israel you know when you talk about different other countries Israel has done an incredible job with the science and research, which has fueled the effort of this green wave that we're seeing, you know, in the legislature in, in Washington D.C. The people's acceptance of it, because science—you can't argue with science and research. You know, it can break down that stigma that we're all fighting every day. And I'm so proud of the fact that it was Israel that is still leading the world into that. Yeah, Israel has really uh, been on the leading edge of that, and I think the U.S. can learn a lot from how they've approached it. And hopefully, uh, as we have legalized hemp in the U.S. and eventually cannabis, you know, we can start getting that research and science and, and playing an active role in that and helping figure out what this does and doesn't do and how to do it safely. That's needed. And if we find out there are negative parts of this, let's find out, right? And then build an industry that addresses those concerns. And uh, you know, when you look at the global picture, which is also a trend, that this industry is, is becoming an international sector, um, you know, there are pockets out there where certain countries are leading things, you know, with Israel, especially with the science and research side, and then you've got Canada as the true global leader in expansion um, on, the, on the medical side and exporting all over the world. So it's fascinating where this is going. Now, every year at this conference or around it, you give a talk here, at least one, and you talk about when you think federal legalization, or at least I, at least I, I like to ask you that every year. Here we are, December 2019. What is the what is your prediction as of today for a federal change, either deschedule legalization? Where are we at? So a year ago at our show, for the first time ever, I actually said yep. that I thought it would happen this year. I remember these things. And I had to get up, I had to get up there <laughs> here and say, I was wrong. Sports guys and weather guys have no problem doing that, so welcome to that, okay? Yeah, right, exactly. Um, but, you know, it was going out on a limb saying, hey, guess what? Something giant is going to change with marijuana. Um, and so, but I felt the forces were aligned. Last year, when I made that prediction, I was wrong, and I think that to do that is it, it, it's it's a ways off in the sense that we're getting closer. Every year, we're getting closer. When you have the the Safe Act and the More Act right. make progress federally, mm -hmm. we're getting there, right? Right. But is it two more steps? Is it three? Is it four? I don't think it's going to be more than a couple years. Um, I'm hesitant to say within the next year, though, because you know when it comes to the government, yep. it's just so hard to predict what the heck they're going to do, and it depends on who's elected and who's in charge and who's the president, and all of that is unknown right now. You're actually thinking that they're actually going to get back to being a governing body as opposed to a media war, Republican versus Democrat war. I mean, it's pretty bad in Washington, D.C. right now. And if, that, if this climate continues, unfortunately, issues like this get sweeped to the side, right? Yep. It's one that they have 
cross-pollinated a little bit, as I keep telling them. What they need to do is pass a joint in the Republican Senate and get everybody a little high and now make the vote, you know? Right. It's I, not going to happen. I'm not going to let you off the hook because it's Las Vegas. That movement of Trump's going to do something before election, yeah, to bring those swing voters, yeah. Democrat, take credit for it. We're in Las Vegas. You're making the odds at the sports book. Odds that Trump does something before the election as he a can, way to... He can make one call I want to, know to the, the Department maker. of Justice and deschedule it. Best, best marijuana odds maker there could be right that's here. That's right. I doubt. I'd say 50 to 1. Oh, that's yeah. a payout. 50 to 1 payout. You heard it first I at just, MJ Biscott. I, I, I think if he was going to have done it, he would have done it already. And I remember we, we were all saying, he's a business guy. He wants the economy. He's going to... He's, he's got money the, in the industry somehow, somehow some, some way. way. I'm sure okay. he does. Um, but uh, I don't know if he's going to go that far uh, yet. Uh, I would love it, you know, if that happens. Just That's as right. Well, and he's full of surprises. So. Oh, yes, he <laughs> is. Uh, well, Chris, I'll tell you, as a virgin at your show, I am so impressed, not only by the amount and the vastness of it, but the whole attitude of the people. Your support staff has been great. Oh, great. Um, Tess has been great. It's all good, right? So, again, thank you for joining us here. Thank you for appearing on We Talk Live with Kurt and Jimmy about a month ago. Appreciate that, too. And we'll take credit for the increase in your popularity, too, if that's okay. You know? Well, you got to put down money on this. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I'm ready. Tiger Woods to win the Masters again. And, and then see if Leo B. Lee. one Trump does something on those odds. 50 to 1 for a buck? Steve D'Angelo say says it's a buck. phone call. He didn't say a buck. That's right. You've got to wage 100 to get to it, right? All right. All right. Well, that'll do it for another very special edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young and a special guest, Kurt Dalton. A reminder that uh, We Talk Live happens once a month on the Pro Cannabis Media Networks as well as Cannabis.net. Chris Walsh, thank you again thank you. for coming on, the founding editor of MJ BizCon. And we will continue here with more In the Weeds on location at MJ BizCon. And remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. We are. Pro Cannabis Media.